everyone this is ramalinga prasad kuppa welcome to my channel pharma world today's topic is cleaning validation part 1 macro calculation a practical approach entire cleaning validation scope includes specific areas related to cleaning the specific areas include one the acceptance criteria of the levels of previous product residues two levels of cleaning to achieve the specific limits as derived under acceptance criteria three bracketing and worst case rating to optimize the cleaning procedures by grouping of common equipment products or a worst case residue to get best optim optimum procedure of cleaning and fourth determination of amount of residue which focuses on the procedure how the amount of residue in cleaned equipment can be determined since these videos are short videos each area is addressed separately as part 1 of the series it is aimed to focus on the first specific area the acceptance criteria which starts with the calculation of macro let us understand the acceptance criteria this is the value of allowable residue of the previous product in the next product clean until the equipment is totally clean is not an acceptable practice it is also not practical or necessary to do so there is a term allowable residue so some non significant amount of residue of previous product may be allowed in the equipment after cleaning since the residue of previous batch is a contamination in the next product it is necessary to limit such carry over into the next product obviously the presence of residue of previous product is an unwanted contamination in the next product but it should be within the acceptable limits the maximum limit that is permitted is called maximum allowable carry over which is abbreviated as macro or mac this is important macro means it is the maximum allowable concentration the macro is reported in milligrams this is measured always in milligrams let us see how we calculate the macro values it is the maximum allowable carry over of the previous product in the next product the logical calculation is as follows smallest daily dose of the product a multiplied by batch size of product b multiplied by the safety factor divided by largest daily dose of product b in this equation product a is previous product and product b is the next product this is a simple logical calculation smaller the number in the numerator and larger the number in the denominator gives low values for example a dose of 300 mg per day administered in three doses of product a will be equal to 100 mg per each dose that is the smallest dose largest daily dose of product b may be considered as 500 mg so 100 by 500 which is 0.2% is smaller factor when compared to 300 by 500 which is 0.6% sf is safety factor usually 1 by 1000 part of standard therapeutic dose is considered as safe the calculation is also done using standard therapeutic dose and minimum batch size for the next batch the example will look like standard therapeutic dose of previous product multiplied by minimum batch size of the next product divided by the standard therapeutic dose of next product 
and further divided by the safety factor. Generally, 1000 is considered as safety factor. This calculation takes into consideration the therapeutic dosage of the drug product in which the API is used. This calculation is based on the therapeutic dosage of the drug. Obviously, this type of calculation is relevant for addressing the cleaning validation of APIs. There are pharmacist reference handbooks for drug dosages. You can get the dosage information from them. Second method of calculation takes toxicological data into consideration. This method is applied when there is no data of therapeutic dose. Logically, if the product is an intermediate, you will not have any such dosage data. In such cases, the toxicity data of the product is considered for MACO calculation. First step is to calculate no observable effect level, that is NOEL. The NOEL is calculated by multiplying the LD50 values with 70 and divided by 2000. NOEL is calculated based on the LD50 values. The LD50 values are the median lethal dose of the test substance that is lethal for 50% of the animals in a dose group. LD50 values will be used to compare acute hazards of industrial chemicals. 70 kilograms is considered as weight of an average adult. 2000 is an empirical constant. From NOEL value, MACO is calculated as MACO is NOEL multiplied by minimum batch size of the next product divided by safety factor and largest normal daily dose of the next product. So the MACO is calculated as per this formula. Safety factor varies depending upon the route of administration. Generally 200 is assigned for oral dosage form. But as a thumb rule for topicals, the safety factor will be between 10 and 100. It is between 100 and 1000 for oral products and 1000 and 10,000 for parenterals. There is yet another third method of calculation that takes into consideration the general limit criteria. In this method, MACO PPM is calculated as MACO PPM will be equal to maximum concentration multiplied by minimum batch size of next product. If 10 ppm criteria is selected, the calculation for the same example as explained will be like this. MACO PPM will be 10 ppm. In this case, it is the maximum concentration that is 10 milligrams divided by 1 million milligrams, which is equal to 0.1. 00001 milligrams multiplied by the batch size of 200 kilos which is 200 million milligrams the MACO will be 2000 milligrams it is very important to see that the unit of measure is same in all these cases in this case it is milligrams this method is adopted when the calculations based on the therapeutic dose or toxicological data results is unacceptably high or irrelevant carryover figures. In some cases where the toxicological data is not available, also this method is suitable. Using the therapeutic dosage calculation, if the estimated MACO is 5 million milligrams, which is equivalent to 5 kg of the product for cleaning with a batch size of 200 kilos, the equipment would be definitely looks contaminated with the previous product. In such cases, a general limit of maximum concentration concept is utilized. The calculation takes into consideration 100 or 10 ppm criteria. The maximum cap value in this case will be 2000 ppm only.
another recent that is 2016 method of calculating MACO is using health based data the calculation is as given below x milligrams will be calculated by the acceptable daily exposure divided by the permitted daily exposure of the previous product and minimum batch size of next product when once you get the x value the final macro will be calculated by dividing the x with standard therapeutic daily dose of the next product in september 2016 the original guidance was revised and there is yet another method provided for macro calculation this takes into consideration the ade and pde values these values are determined by considering the no observed adverse effect level average weight of an adult which is considered as 70 kilos composite uncertainty factor modifying factors and adjustment factors to account for uncertainties the ema guide would focus more on the subject let us see how the swab limits are established the basic assumption is that the distribution of residue is homogeneous on all surfaces what is a swab it is to wipe out certain area of the equipment to extract the residue it is similar to wiping out any wet residue using a cloth one assumption is that the residue if any would be distributed uniformly all over the contact surfaces contact surfaces are the inner surfaces of the equipment in which the material gets in contact MACO is calculated by any of the methods as described above now the swab limits are calculated as below the swab limit which is given as the target value which is represented in microgram per decimeter square will be equal to MACO divided by the total surface area in decimeter square again here total surface means the total contact surface different swab limits may be set for different equipment but the total value should not exceed the target value 100 decimeter square will be equal to one square meter this is for your information you may have different swab limits for each equipment but the total should be within the target value always macro calculation for entire equipment drain is as given below total quantity of possible carrier in microgram is equal to sum of ai in dm square multiplied by mi which is microgram per dm square where ai is the area of each equipment tested and mi is the quantity in microgram per dm square for each swab per area swabbed surface normally one decimeter square is used for this purpose total carryover is calculated as sum of each equipment carryover total area ai multiplied by the quantity per swab mi will give you the total carryover for each equipment it is important to see that the unit of measure should be same in all cases dm square is generally accepted unit one dm square will be obtained from a swab of 10 centimeters multiplied by 10 centimeters which is equal to 100 square centimeters which is one decimeter square so carryover for individual equipment is calculated and the sum of all these will give you total carryover this symbol indicates that all are summed up cleaning results should not exceed the maximum expected residue for individual equipment and total equipment drain should not exceed the total expected residue cleaning results should be within the calculated expected residue for individual equipment and the total should not exceed the expected calculated residue this is similar to understanding of your hplc or gc results 
each impurity should be within individual specification and the total should be within the maximum limit. Let us see how the rinse limits are established. After the last cleaning cycle, the rinse cycle should start to collect the rinse sample. This is very important to understand. After complete cleaning of the equipment and after the last rinse of the cleaning cycle, the equipment will be considered for rinse sampling. Selection of rinse solvent should take into consideration solubility of the contaminants. Contaminants should dissolve in rinse solvent very well. MACO is generally calculated for each equipment for rinse sample. MACO is calculated as described above. The target value is calculated as given below. Total target value milligram per liter is equal to MACO in milligrams multiplied by the volume of rinse in liters. Total target value in mg per liter is calculated as MACO multiplied by the rinse volume in liters. Amount of residue present in the cleaned equipment is calculated in milligrams as total volume of rinse in liters multiplied by the concentration in mg per liter in the sample taken for testing. If there are any impurities in the blank solvent that was used for the rinse, they should be subtracted from the total concentration in the sample. This value should be less than the target value. Let us see some important points to note. Choice of swab or rinse depends on the type of equipment. If there are hard to reach areas, near the manhole of a reactor, milling equipment, mixing equipment, filters are generally considered for swab sampling. The advantage for rinse sampling is that the whole surface of the equipment is sampled for contamination, provided during equipment qualification, surface wetting testing aspect was also taken into account. Hard to reach areas are the one which are not easily accessible for thorough cleaning because of the complex design of the equipment. In such cases, swab sample is taken. If the surfaces of the equipment are smooth and easily accessible for thorough rinse, rinse sample is considered. Examples include reactors, open tanks, large area equipments with adequate visibility. But it is important that wettability of the contact surfaces should also be qualified during the qualification of equipment. This should be documented fully. I hope that the first part of the cleaning validation and calculation of MACO and the peripheral areas around MACO are discussed in this video. While watching this video, keep a copy of guidance on aspects of cleaning validation in active pharmaceutical ingredients plants dated December 2000 and the updated version of September 2016. In the coming up videos, the other areas like levels of cleaning, bracketing and worst case rating and determination of amount of residue will be discussed. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like and share. Thank you.